In 1936, Hart Mountain National Antelope Refuge was established to provide range for remnant herds of pronghorn antelope in south-central Oregon. The refuge also provides habitat for more than 300 wildlife species, including sage-grouse, whose numbers have markedly declined across the West in recent decades. Until 1990, most of the refuge was open to ranchers, whose cattle degraded habitat that is essential to wildlife. Steve Herman, an ecologist and faculty member of the Evergreen State College since 1971, has regularly brought students to Hart Mountain Refuge to band birds. Dr. Herman spoke with me in 2004 about some of his experiences over the years with environmental damage that cattle had inflicted on the refuge. Throughout this whole sequence of grazing from the earliest days, even those refuge managers who supported grazing also maintained a fence around a pasture called Buck Pasture. And um, it's a little bit out of the way, but not much, and it was a sizable piece of uh, landscape. And they excluded cows from that from the whole time. So it, it was a, a sort of a show place. It was a creek, there's a creek that runs through it, Willow Creek. And you could go on the upstream side, and when the cows were there, the water was flowing over bare rock until it went under the fence. And beyond the fence, another 20 feet, you couldn't see the stream because it was in a, a nicely covered slot, as, as a natural stream would be. At the other end, at the downstream end, where the Willow Creek came out, there was a 15-foot head cut, a 15-foot hunk of erosion, and lots of evidence of, of, uh, of grazing. And I was there, I forget what year it was, it's probably about 1991 when the, when the effort to get the cows off was heating up with an Oregon State University range ecologist. And we were standing at this site. And uh, I said to him, I said, look at that head cut. And look at, look at the uh, pasture above that. What do you think caused that head cut? A head cut. And he looked at me and his voice went down a little ways and he said, Steve, I don't know I wasn't here. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that happened there was that at my camp in 1985, uh, the refuge let a prescribed burn get out of control. And the resulting fire burnt 13,500 acres. And it came rushing through my uh, little aspen grove just before the fire got there, my friend on the, on the refuge staff had a water drop right where we have our kitchen and so on, so that area was, was saved. And because of my constant bleating, it was arranged by the service that that particular area would be free of cattle from that time on beginning in 1986, so they put fences on the, on the paralleling uh, ridge tops. And previous to that, when I started working there in 1981, cows were everywhere. We would get up in the morning and my kids and my dogs and my, my wife and my students would chase the cows out so we could put up our nets to catch and ban birds. Cow pies everywhere willows, aspens, browse down. Cows were excluded in the, in the uh, spring of 1986. And uh, there had been no aspen reproduction. There were these old growth aspens, but virtually no young ones prior to that time. And I said something to my friend in the Fish and Wildlife Service about this. I said, what's going on? Cows eat all the aspen suckers that come up. Oh, no, Steve, that's not a cow problem, that's a human problem. 
I said, really, what? Tell me about that. He said, well, he said, in the fall, when hunters come in here, they use the downed aspens for firewood, and those, those downed aspen logs would protect those aspen suckers from, from browsing by the cows if they didn't do that. I mean, here was a man who could tie his shoes with great skill. I'm sure he had other um, similar motor skills, and he was a smart guy. And even he believed that crap. Well, cows came off, aspens started coming up like grass. It was only two years I couldn't find a place to put my wall tents. I had to landscape a little bit to get my wall tents in there. When the time came uh, to um, get serious about taking cows off, which was about 92 or something like that, these aspens were, were significant thickness and height. And so they provided a preview of what the entire refuge would look like in those situations if the cows were removed. So the refuge manager, Barry Ricewig, kicked out me and kicked my students and I out uh, for a period of time and they had workshops and they brought the cowboys in, they brought the managers in, they brought the environmentalists in. And all he had to do was go like this and point, and then take them to the next draw that was still grazed and point, you know, say a word. It was blatantly clear. And so that was a precursor, one of the precursors to the removal of cows from that 260,000 acre refuge.